Let's bring in Austin Mock here from The Athletic. Uh, Austin, uh, we appreciate your time. How are you, sir? Doing good. Thanks so much for having me, guys. Hey, we appreciate it. We want to talk some college football playoff projections. First, have you ever seen an opposing player celebrate with the other fans after they just lost? Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely definitely not the look you want to have there. But uh have not seen that. And uh, honestly, you don't see much. I'm actually surprised that like hasn't happened before with like either like family members or something. But yeah, tough, uh, tough look there. <laughs> it's not good. All right, Austin, give us your sense in Tennessee because you do a great bracket of breaking down who you think is going to be where in the college football playoff. So what are your thoughts on the balls heading into the Georgia game? Yeah, I mean, this is the this is this is the big one, right? If they if they win, I don't want to say they're automatically in with a victory on Saturday, but um, have to feel pretty good from where they're where they stand if they want to make the playoff. If they do get a win, if they get a loss, things get a little dicier just because I don't really know how the committee is going to handle them. Like they were ranked behind Indiana and BYU, so I like to me that sounds like the committee's not super impressed with Tennessee's resume. Um, the committee looks at like, I know it's not the best stat, but over teams that you've beat that are, have a 500 record or better, um, Tennessee doesn't have a lot of those wins somehow. Um, and, and despite being in the sec, so a lot of season left, I know it doesn't seem like that, but there is so much, so many things change over the last, you know, three weeks of the season here. But, uh, yeah, I, I think they're still in a good spot, even if they lose, but I, I win and you're kind of in, I think is where they stand now. Loss, you're kind of at uh, mercy of what other teams uh, do the rest of the way. Austin, how much damage did that Ole Miss win over Georgia do to Tennessee's chances? You know, I, I follow y'all's site. You guys had Tennessee, uh, the Athletic had Tennessee at a 61% chance of making the CFP going into last week, and it dropped to 39% this week, from my understanding. Was that just the Ole Miss one? Yeah, um, that, that brought Ole Miss back into the uh, picture. Basically, it was, you know, they had a 50 50- the game was basically a coin flip before the game. They had a chance to lose out um, or miss out on the playoff because I don't think they were going to get in. Uh, I don't think they're a team that will get in with a three-loss uh, record. But it, it's tough because there's this whole log jam of SC, possible log jam of SEC teams uh, you know, that can finish with two losses. And it just really – like where does – you know, obviously you have Alabama, Ole Miss, and Georgia ranked right against each other. But if Tennessee it loses to Georgia, you have this like – crazy circle of Ole Miss beat Georgia, Alabama beat Georgia, but Tennessee beat Alabama. Like, so it, it really, I don't want to say the committee is just going to pick and choose. And I don't really know who that benefits. If it's me, if I had to guess, it probably benefits Georgia and Alabama in that essence. But uh, yeah, it, it really becomes kind of a picking game here. If, if Tennessee loses and you have those four teams kind of all sandwiched together. If, if you were to predict right now, does the SEC get four or five teams in the college football playoff? Oh, that's tough. I I think it's four it, just because, like, I, I don't know if there's enough spots left. Like, you know, there's this interest. It, it's going to come down to conference championship weekend's going to be huge. Like, if BYU keeps winning, um, you're going to, like, if they're ranked, you know, they're ranked sixth right now. If they by then are ranked fifth, or if they lose to, you know, a Colorado or a Kansas State, are they going to drop out entirely? Like, we just saw Miami only fall to nine. Um, so it, it's, it's, it's kind of breaking with BYU not losing, even though they probably should have lost a couple games so far. I don't know if there's enough room. And I think the, the SEC, unfortunately, they're the best conference by a, pretty much a landslide and and i think there's just not enough teams left to to or spots left for those teams to get in so if i had to guess i think it's four five definitely possible but uh i think it's probably four how underrated is all of a sudden then that notre dame army game going to be in a week or so because if they lose that does open the door for five sec teams right yes i would think if notre dame loses um they're that that would definitely if it's the army because then that's two you know, Army's ranked in the top 25, so that's not really seen as a bad loss. But obviously, the Northern Illinois one is the worst loss of any team that's in the playoff hunt here. So, yeah, that would add it up. Like, if I, I try to think of, like, if Notre Dame lost uh, at USC in the final week, that opens it up as well. Um, but, yeah, if, if you're one of these, if you're Tennessee or any of these SEC teams that are not really Texas 
I think it's really just Texas at this point. You're you're kind of hoping for these the Notre Dames, you need Indiana to get smoked by Ohio State this weekend to kind of I think that helps them as well uh, to get an extra team in. So there's a couple things here. Basically, you're just rooting for everybody ahead of them, uh, ahead of you to lose. Austin, how much do you think politics can come into play? In other words, the Big Ten's going to want as many teams in the college football playoff as the SEC and vice versa. I would argue that the SEC has more college football playoff eligible teams than the Big Ten, which is incredibly top heavy. But you, you have the two sides kind of working together now to pull up the 16 team format. I mean, how political does this get of you scratch my back, I scratch yours when those decisions are made? Yeah, I don't know. It, it's tough to it's it's tough to see. I, I do think that if, you know, we have a Georgia, you know, we'll just use last night's bracket, Georgia being the first team out. Um, Texas A&M is, you know, they were ranked 15th. They're right on the the you know the field the door knocking on the door to get into the playoff i think it's just this is no matter what happens well, no matter how this season shakes out the 14 team playoff at the very minimum is going to be a thing here in the next you know maybe two years even um i think they can renegotiate in two years if i remember correctly so i just think it's one of those things because you, you're you're gonna see it and definitely if the sec keeps beating up on each other you know that if tennessee loses you have this alabama Ole miss georgia tennessee problem and like i said they're gonna have to kind of pick you know you could you you can make it's one of those things where you can make an argument for anyone you know like oh tennessee beat alabama but then georgia beat um you know texas and you just keep going around and around in the circle um and and that's gonna leave a pretty big name program um blue blood if you will maybe on the outside looking in and that's just gonna you know it's just gonna become a thing where these teams these two conferences want to expand this even with the big ten only having four teams uh, in the conversation. Yeah, so um, Austin, I want to go down this list because I want to talk about a few teams real quick. So um, because obviously Indiana and BYU leapfrog Tennessee this week. I don't know how because I don't see how you could say their resume got better this past weekend by beating Utah by one and Michigan by five if you didn't think they were better than Tennessee last week. But just to own in on a couple of these, let me start with Indiana. If Indiana loses and gets smoked by Ohio State and goes 11-1, and one, but – they get blown out in their only game. Do you think all of these SEC teams we're mentioning that are ten and two will get the nod over an eleven and one Indiana? You know, it. I thought I would have more confidence if Miami would have been ranked lower, um, just because I don't think like Miami's schedule is is all that. I don't think their wins are all that impressive, and they only dropped to nine. Um, you know, with a loss to Georgia Tech, a team that Notre Dame beat 31-13. I know Georgia Tech's quarterback um, situation was a little different for that game. But um, I'd have a little bit more faith if if Miami would have fallen. I think they'll be in the conversation. It'll maybe be picking resumes here. If they all went out and it's, you know, those four teams are at two losses, I do think there's going to be conversations. And if it's like a 49-7 to type of win for Ohio State over Indiana, I think then it's going to be really hard for um, – for Indiana to to have a case there, um, but yeah, it's, it, I I truly think this is one of those eye test kind of margin of victory is going to matter a lot, and Indiana should be doing whatever they can to to keep that game close. When you speak of margin of victory, um, two years ago Tennessee was number one. They go to Georgia, and I think the score, Caleb, you might correct me, was twenty seven to thirteen. But that felt like a game that Georgia could have won forty five to six if they wanted to. So. Margin of victory, I test. How important is that? That Tennessee doesn't have Nico, which we haven't discussed with you. But <clears throat> if Tennessee doesn't have Nico and they go down and they lose 24 23, does that, I know it sounds weird to lose a game, but does that in some ways help Tennessee if they lose close? Uh, maybe. It, it's really hard because, you know, you're getting into the point where like they can kind of do whatever they want, definitely with. You know, we saw last year with Florida State um, what what an injury can do to a you know team's ranking. So, I, I think it I think it'll ultimately it will help close loss to Georgia in any fashion. I think will look good for Tennessee um, because I think Tennessee is lacking those big wins um, that some other SEC teams have. But uh, it, it's just one of those things that I don't know. I think they pick and choose when it matters. Maybe like when two teams are really close or like if those, if these four SEC teams that we're referencing versus Indiana, it might be one of those things where like, okay, if Indiana loses by, you know, seven at Ohio state, 
now it's like, okay, they've kind of destroyed everybody they've played. They played the number two team in the country close. Um, you know, maybe they get the benefit of the doubt. Where if it's, you know, even if it's 35, 13, things look a little bit different there. And I will say part of it is, you know, the helmet matters. Indiana is not the, not the brand that any of those other SEC teams are. And I, I think that does factor in when you're, it's close. When I, I don't think it's like, you know, if BYU is undefeated, I don't think a SEC team would jump them necessarily. But uh, when it's 11 and one versus a 10 and two SEC team, I think I think that the brand does matter. Well, good because I'm on record saying that if Indiana makes the college football playoff, we should just blow this thing up and start all over. I mean, it depends. Like if they if they play if they play Ohio State close, I think they deserve it in a way. Um, it just because like it, it goes both ways because we're either going to go the direction of basically the power like the Big Ten and SEC like ruling this all and and even further like you know, maybe the top seven, eight brand names in the SEC, the top six brand names in the, in the big 10 uh, calling the shots there. Uh, but that is one thing interesting because these are the two, t- two conferences, you know, which seem like pulling the strings in college football right now. Um, how much does the big 10 pull for Indiana uh, is going to be a uh, big thing, which I, they will because it's, that's how it works, but it just, we're going to kind of see how, uh, how strong that pull really is. So Austin, um, Actually, and funny enough, another thing we talk about politicking, they would love to see Notre Dame playing Indiana in a college football playoff game. I mean, that's Northern Indiana, Southern Indiana, um, just different for those who don't know, very different cultures and a lot of things. Um, so getting to, but also let me give another hypothetical real quick because BYU leapfrogged Tennessee. The committee, my understanding is not supposed to hold conference championship losses against the team relative to another team and what they did in the regular season if they don't play a conference championship game. So say BYU hypothetically goes undefeated. They play Colorado in the Big 12 title game. And Colorado beats the brakes off BYU. I'm talking about 50 to nothing. Does that – does BYU still stay ahead of a Tennessee that may not play for the SEC title? Because that was a conference championship game, so it can't really be held against them. So instead, Colorado and BYU both just go? Yeah, that's that's the interesting question, right? Like nobody, we don't really know what goes on in that uh, committee room. Um, I, if I had to guess, definitely if they get the you know fifty to nothing type game, I think BYU is out of the playoff at that point. Um, they, I kind of understood Indiana jumping Tennessee just because one, they're ten and zero, they've won more win than BYU. Um, Michigan is like that middle, like I'll like I, Michigan versus Arkansas is like kind of similar. I know Michigan's looked worse at times, but. Um, I, it, it, I see that as like kind of that level of team this year. So the committee sees that as like a fine win and sure, maybe they get a little bit of a brand bias there with Michigan, the BYU thing. I don't, I don't, I can't really grasp why they jumped. Like they should have lost. Like you could very easily make the argument that they should have lost. They, they, Utah is not, I don't even like, they're just, they're, they're under 500 in a, you know, a weaker big 12. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure what happened. I can't really explain that. And that, if you would have asked me last week, I would have said for sure that BYU is not in if they don't win the Big 12. Um, with them jumping Tennessee, like I, it, maybe the committee likes them more than we realize, and that SMU win might be, uh, you know, giving them a little bit of a boost as well. So I don't see it, but yeah, again, they jumped them. So maybe the committee is a little bit fonder of BYU than I am. All right, Austin, last thing Tennessee loses close to Georgia, but handles UTEP, which they will. Beats Vanderbilt by a sound margin, which I think they will. If you had to bet your mortgage, does Tennessee make the college football playoff? Um, man, it it, it depends. I think on if Vanderbilt if Vanderbilt gets a win against LSU, maybe that'll that'll boost things. I think that's a for sure. Um, but I'm gonna go yes. I think they will make it at ten and two. Um, because they. I, I don't know. I think Georgia's kind of the odd, odd one out there um, right now because Alabama's two spots ahead of them. Um, I I feel like Tennessee will. I don't know. It's tough, but I think ten and two they'll be in. That's my guess. <clears throat> Austin, great stuff, buddy. You got a tough job, but you got the best last name for it ever. You do a, a mock prediction. So mm-hmm. I don't know what that says about me and what I do in my off time, but. <laughs> um austin we certainly appreciate it, buddy we'll hopefully catch up with you again you're doing great work man we appreciate it. how do people follow your work yep follow me up uh at the athletic um and i'm on every social media platform at amoc 419 so all right buddy
Austin, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate it. Yep, thank you, guys.